the third case of permutations. So this time, we've got n objects. We're going to arrange all of them, but some of them are the same. Okay, so some of them are the same. Or as I put there, not all different. Well, it means the same thing. Okay, I'm going to try and come up with a pattern. Let's bring it down to the simplest case where we've just got two objects. Now, we saw yesterday if they're all different, there'd be two factorial ways of doing it. A, B, B, A. But if those two objects were the same, how many ways are there of doing it? Well, just one, of course. Because now, to look at AA, and if I swap the objects around, it's still AA. So, as far as we can tell, it's the same arrangement. So the question is, how do you get from 2 to 1? Any ideas how we get from 2 to 1? Okay, that's one way you can get from 2 to 1. You could divide by 2, and 2 becomes 1. What's another way you could get from 2 to 1? We could subtract 1. That would get us to 1 as well. Let's have a look at three objects and see if a pattern emerges. So if they're all different, three factorial, six different ways. So A, B, C, A, C, B, B, A, C, B, C, A, C, A, B, C, B, A. Now, if two of them are the same, it comes down to three. So I've made the two of them A, so A, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, A. So in the first one, I went from two to one. In the second one, I went from six to three. We had two ideas. One was divide by two. One was subtract one. Seems more logical when we look at the second case to go with which one? Okay. So if all three are the same, if we divide by two, we're expecting one and a half different ways of arranging. So three the same. Uh, I certainly didn't divide by two. So something more than just dividing by two. Let's have a look at four objects. If they're all different, there's quite a few. 24 different ways. If two are the same, we're thinking divide by two. Let's see what happens. Sure enough, 12. Now, when we went to three, remember we went from three to 1. So was that divide by 3? In which case, if it's divide by 3, I'd be expecting 4. Let's see. If 3 are the same, sure enough, I've ended up with 4. Okay. 2 are the same, I divided by 2. 3 of the same, divided by 3. So 4 of the same, we divide by Okay, let's have a look. Four the same, we had one. Hmm. Yes, I went from 12 to four. But what I should really be thinking of is if there was, they were all the same, there was 24. How do I get from 24 to four? Divide by six. Not quite. Yes, you are divided by six, but that's not the way we want to think about it. Divide by 3 factorial. And why 3 factorial? Because 3 objects are the same. So we no longer care about the arrangements of those 3 objects. If they were different, those 3 objects, there'd be 3 factorial ways of arranging them. So I'll divide by the number of ways they could have been arranged if they were different. And so that's how we do it. If I've got n objects, x of them are the same. The number of ways we can arrange them is n factorial, so if they were all different, divided by x factorial, well, the number of ways we could have arranged the objects that are the same if they were different. So with that in mind, how many different words, using all of the letters, of Connaughton, which is a surname of a student I once taught and I thought, that's a good name to use. Look at the repetition of letters and things like that in there. So, all right, how many letters have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have 11 letters. So, if they were all different, there'd be 11 factorial. But we have some repeating letters. 
There are, let's see, well, C, there's only one C. There are two O's. So I'll divide by two factorial the number of ways those O's could have been arranged. There are three N's. So I'll divide by three factorial the number of ways the N's could be arranged. And that's all. None of the other letters are repeated. So it'll be 11 factorial on 2 factorial, 3 factorial, which turns out to be quite a few. Let's have a look at the HSC one. Now, of course, in the HSC, they can't assume certain knowledge that's not in the syllabus. So they start off with this question, letting us know that A, E, I, O, and U are these things we call vowels. Okay, so they are vowels. First question, how many arrangements of the letters in the word algebraic are possible? Notice they didn't say how many words can you form. They said arrangements of the letters. So that's to stop any confusion about do we want serious words or pretend words. Or, they just said arrangements of the letters. So algebraic, we have nine letters all up, nine factorial, and there are two A's in there. That's the only repetition we have. So, okay, so there's part I. How many arrangements are possible if the vowels occupy the second, the third, the fifth, and the eighth positions? Okay, we look after our restrictions first. We are going to place the vowels. We have how many vowels? That, the tip there, or the hint, is that they said place them in the second, the third, the fifth, and the eighth. So that, that was a bit of a giveaway. There's four there. Very good. How many of the vowels are the same? <coughs> so therefore, how many ways could we arrange those vowels? <laughs> yeah. So four factorial and two factorial, which would be four times three. So now, now I didn't define this word for you, so don't get too blown away when I use it. We're going to arrange the consonants. They're the letters that are not vowels. So, number eight is the vowels. There are five, and they're all different, so five factorial, giving us a grand total of 1,440 arrangements. Let's add 10F to our list. 